Welcome back for another episode of the Vitamin C's podcast, a proud part of the CLNS Media Network. I am your host, Tim Shields, and I am joined by my buddy and bro, Wayne Breezy Brown. Uh, We are checking in right before the play-in tournament is going to kick off. Celtics are already scheduled out, and we will touch base on that, as well as a few other things. First things first, taking care of business. Wayne, how are we doing today, man? I'm doing Tony the Tiger great, man. I'm Tony the Tiger great. Celtics ended on a high note. With a fashionable win, uh, with some with their bench, <laughs> it was really cool to see some of these players um, out there playing, looking developed on on a pro level. And I think I shot you a message. I was like, "Yo, we need to see this kid more. Like, we need to oh, see this kid." Oh, talking JD. More. I'm talking JD Davison, man. Like energy, speed, defense. The only thing he got to do is the three too. He can he hit, hit the three. one, but if he has to do it consistently, once yeah. he gets the three, oh my gosh! I mean, what's going to happen to the rotation next year? Should be a great year for him to try to fill in some some space. Uh, but I, I love what we have from our players. I feel like it was a tremendous regular season for these guys. Uh, a lot of ups, not too many downs. Just a couple of question marks on like how our coach was dealing with the rotations and why he wasn't calling timeouts. And I think you heard him in a press conference. They said, hey, if there's anything that, you know, you kind of like you would do differently. Yeah, He's call like, time out. 70, we won 70% <laughs> of our games. games like, right? It's like, I think we're I think we're doing all right. Yeah, so. 57 win season, man. 57, <laughs> like, man. Something to, like, definitely round of applause to. Um, and look, it's coming down to the playoffs. And we have two teams that we're going to be – uh, kind of like waiting on to see who we're going to play. And I think the Celtics are ready to go bam, bam, thank you, man, with them. I don't care who it is. I think the Celtics are ready, bro. I think that's the mentality they have to have, right? Even if it is a team like Miami, like everyone expects Miami to give them issues. And I think that's totally fair. We've talked about it before on shows, but Miami is the team that I would probably worry about. And by worry about, I just know that they're going to be a pain. Like that's really what it comes down to. I have no doubt that the Celtics will handle uh, and take care of business, whoever they face. But I think Atlanta is a softer matchup, and it seems to be in terms of the odds makers, uh, they definitely seem like a softer matchup in this playing game. So uh, seven and eight seed are going to be facing off. So that's the Heat hosting the Hawks. That's going to be on Tuesday, a 7.30 tip-off. And right now, currently Miami's favored uh, by five and a half. Right now, that's the spread. And so I, the expectation is, is everyone's going to be healthy for that in terms of all of these other players that have been resting. Miami rested everyone their last game. So did Atlanta against Boston. You know, everyone was out with soreness or something like that. So they've had a few days off. They're going to be fresh going into that game. Going to be very interesting to see how those two teams operate. I know Miami's had the edge on the last few games against Atlanta and they're a tough defensive squad, but, they also kind of seem like they're grappling with the concept of we're a playing team this year. And like, that's kind of the situation that we're dealing with. This is a test for us. So I am interested to see how that game goes. Obviously I'm pulling for Atlanta. I think Boston matches up with them much better than how they would match up against Miami, especially when it comes to Eric Spolstra. Cause I worry about a rookie coach going against Eric Spolstra. I think that's a fair concern. And I think there's going to be a few other people who are going to have that worry, but Again, it's a 57-win team. Uh, this is the best record the Celtics have had since, I think, 2009. So you're talking about a very well-rounded team, and that's with them, in our opinion, leaving a couple wins on the board. So uh, what are your thoughts, though, going into this Tuesday uh, playing game? Yeah, man, look, it's going to come down to these two teams. And uh, <clears throat> I, I mean, personally, I would like to see the Atlanta Hawks like you will. Uh I feel like it's just a better matchup for the Celtics, and I don't know. I just kind of want them to have a, a easier first round. Not saying that it would be easy against the Hawks. I just feel like the way the matchup is, they got a couple of exciting bigs on the Atlanta Hawks team. Uh, they Their guards are pretty good, but it seems like the Celtics just play them very well. I'm not saying that they figured out Ice Trey or Trey Young, whatever it is you guys want to call him, but they kind of allow, they take the rest of the team away and kind of like just let him do his thing if he can get it off. And if you ever watch when, when Trey is playing against the Boston Celtics, he's taking extra deep threes. Now, if those go in, they go in. I mean, you got to give credit to the shooter, but... He's not getting to the paint like he normally does. Um, I I definitely like that matchup better. But I just have a feeling we're going to play the Heat. And all I'm going to say is the Heat is on. And, and, And look, Jimmy Butler, playoff Butler, is a little different than what it is in the regular season. We know that. 
But I'm excited to watch playoff Tatum and playoff Brown. <laughs> like, you know what, what I mean? Yeah. It, the other thing is, I can't. Did we have a chance to talk about Jalen Brown's hand? We have, we have yet. not because we have not recorded since that news came out. So apparently he, he broke it on a Voss. Apparently on a, on a Voss. I mean, a Voss. <laughs> what, what are you what are you doing with vases and flowers, man? Get somebody to deliver it, man. Call one eight hundred flowers and have them touch the vase. <laughs> well, I think he like he waters his plants, right? He had like a whole tweet. Everyone's like, he told you that he does this. Like Brown waters listen, his plants. Talk to your plants and pay somebody else to water the plants. You make way too much money. To be watering plants, and now you get this laceration on your 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 hand or finger, and now it's a possibility it's going to hurt on Saturday. I don't know. I I I'm hoping he'll play finger and all. I think it'll be okay. I mean, okay. The that's funny what I thing need was, to hear from you. Seeing his hand wrapped up like at first, like it it's was, this crazy. It was a club. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, <laughs> he had a football what, club. Boy. <laughs> what is happening? How deep of a cut? And then like the next game though, there was only like. Right. I feel like they probably were like, hey, maybe we should not wrap this up as much because people are like freaking out a little bit. We and so it's up. like significantly less bandages. And I was like, I wonder if it was just because they had just put the stitches in. He got five stitches, I think. Five stitches. And so I don't know how bad. It, I'm sure we're going to end up seeing it, you know, going into that game. And he's not expected to miss any time, but it's more so just like the timing sucks. And everyone's, of course, like, did he actually like cut his hand? Like, how did exactly did it happen? Did you pick up a piece and then you cut your hand? Or is it like the vase was falling or the vase was falling? Whatever way you want to pronounce it. <laughs> and it like you tried to catch it and it smashed. Like, I want well, to know exactly in the what vase? happened. Well, it just, that, that's got to be a heavy vase for gravity to allow it to break on the impact of it hitting the hand. Or it's a, just a weak vase. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Like, did he did he cut it when he was cleaning it up? Like, what's the order of operation? Now, see, that here? could be that could that has to be it, right? Because it's a laceration and it, and it, and acquired stitches, right? So, like, if, in order to get stitches, you like you had to dig right deep to where, like, you know, you have to sew it back together in order for the wound to heal. So, I don't know, but I hope he's able to dunk and shoot on Saturday. That's the only it's thing I care about. Hand too. It's the That's the only thing. Hand. I'm just hoping it's minor, and I think it is, but. You know, you ever have any kind of injury like this pop up? You're like, ah, oh, come on, man. Like, we're like, oh, yeah, great. Like, everyone's resting. It's, it's terrible. It's that's just, that's, that's it's all it terrible is. terrible timing. It's terrible. I, like, because you I, could, if you think about it, Tim, you ever got like, I, I, I put it like this. The laceration and the stitches is probably a lot better than getting like a paper cut. The paper cut would nag him the whole time. It's a different type of pain. Like, he probably could have lost his finger and been fine. But you get a paper cut and you'd be like, dang, it's still there. And every time you irritate it, it hurts and things like that. So I'm kind of glad it was something like this. And, and it's probably on its way of healing. Technology is a lot different. Remember back in the day, I remember getting stitches. And I remember having to go to the doctors to get the stitches removed. Now they have stitches that fall out on their own. And now they probably have the super laser staple things type. I don't know what's going on, but he's probably fine. I, I think he's going to be Good and well to well well to go on uh, Saturday, bro. Yeah, they made a point of not stressing it too much, and obviously, kind of at that point, it's a little bit of damage control. But I don't <laughs> think it's going to be a big enough deal. I mean, yeah, you kind of have to, you know. But um, so the Saturday matchup, though, game one, regardless of whichever team it is, it's going to be in Boston to start off. Game one is at three thirty Eastern time, and coverage is going to be on ESPN for that. And to review all of the seating that we have right now. Um, Bucks are in the first seed, best uh, record in the NBA. Uh, outside of the Bucks, if the Celtics were to play any other team, they would have home court advantage. Um, so basically, until they face the Bucks, they will always have home court, and that still goes for if they make the NBA Finals, they will have home court. Um, so Milwaukee's waiting for the winner of that play-in right now. You've got your Miami Heat and Atlanta Hawk matchup on Tuesday. And then you're also going to have the Bulls and the Raptors playing. Now, the winner of that's going to be able to go ahead and face the loser of the seven versus eight game. So most likely, I'm guessing it's going to be the Raps. Ultimately, I think it's going to be the Hawks and the Heat are these two teams that are left. But you never know. And that's kind of why they introduced the playing tournament is it adds a little bit of excitement. Um, outside of that, though, you got a good matchup between the Cavaliers and the Knicks. Then you get the 76ers versus the New Look Nets. And then, of course, you've got the Celtics waiting for this seven versus eight matchup to pan out. And you look out west, you're going to have 
the Nuggets waiting for the eight seed winner to emerge. Your playing teams are going to be the Lakers versus Minnesota. And I don't know yeah. if you saw this no about Minnesota. Bear, what is going on in Minnesota? I, I, you got what is the, going on in Minnesota? And with Gobert, right? He punches a guy and then kind of steps back and chickens yeah, he out. Yeah, punched right? slow mo, man. Like he I, punched Kyle Anderson, who seems to be like a good teammate. So, like, what remember the we hell? were trying to get him at one point? Remember? Oh yeah, and I we still ended like up getting slow-mo. Derek White. Remember? Yeah. Now, that's but true. here you, he punches him, and and then who's the other player that punched the wall? Like the now that's the idiot, like Jaden McDaniel. Why would you punch the wall? For them. He's been huge for them. He was a why, big get. Why would you oh, punch the wall? Man. Dumb. I, it was a very bad punch move. a pillow, punch a basketball, punch something softer that's not going to make your hand hit on an impact. And the only reason why I know is because I did this when I was young and I broke my hand. I punched the <laughs> wall. Like a brick wall, too, on top of that. Not even the cheap rock. At, at the end of the day, like that's a huge loss as well. Because if they do beat the Lakers, they'll get Gobert back. But McDaniel might not be coming back because I don't know. No, he's I, he's done for the year, most likely. Damn. I don't think there's any way that he can come back. I mean, you you literally broke it like right before the playing tournament. Like, yeah. I, it depends on where the break is too. Like, it's the same thing with feet, right? Like, if you get any kind of break in your hand or your feet, there's so many different smaller bones and they're all interlocking. So it's really, really difficult when that's healing because there's always some kind of pressure. You never know if there's going to be, you know, scar tissue or the way that the bone's going to heal over. So just really, really terrible timing right now for Minnesota. They're not the only team out West that's dealing with stuff. Um, you've got the Memphis Grizzlies in the two spot. And they're going to face uh, the seventh seed, um, which is, you know, whoever ends up coming out of that Lakers-Minnesota matchup. And then you've got uh, Nola going against OKC. And I kind of am pulling for OKC to make it because they're a fun team. But Memphis is dealing with issues, too. They lost, I think it was Brandon Clark they lost for the year. Steven Adams is going to be out for the year. He had uh, knee injections, similar to what like Kemba Walker had. So once you start getting stem cell injections into your knee, that's not a good indicator of where the health is at. And so they're dealing with their own issues out West. West is very much more a crapshoot than I feel like the East is. So that's kind of soothing. You don't really know who's going to come out of the uh, West. You've got four and five seed, which is going to be the Suns versus the Clippers, which is interesting. Clippers also having a dust up. That was weird. Bones Highland is like not getting a good rep this year. There seems to be a lot of friction wherever he goes. So they got stuff to figure out there. And then you've got the Kings going against the Warriors, which I find interesting. That's going to yeah, be a cool. That's going to be a good there. one. That that's I'm pulling gonna... for the Kings, man. They deserve a win. But the Kings, you know, the Kings, Kings. Kings. the Kings. But they're not going to be Golden State. Look, it's playoff time <laughs> because it's playoff time. You so got... confidently, like yeah, <laughs> bro. It's it's playoff time. You got Clay hitting <laughs> shots. Like you got three years ago, Clay coming back to form. Curry's getting back to form. Draymond Green is playing good basketball again. It's just playoff time. I, here's two teams in the West that I won't count out. The Lakers and the and the Warriors. And I know they're older teams, but, man, it's like fighting. It's like, you know, having that uncle strength. Like, you know what I'm saying? The old man <laughs> strength, you know? And you get you get down to that and you be thinking, oh, I'm grown now. I could beat my uncle. Nah, they got a different. They got strength, strategy. They they know stuff, and so don't count out. I I was watching the Lakers game, and I was like, how can people hate on LeBron? This he's not the greatest player of all time to me. It's still Michael Jordan, but he's definitely the king of the NBA, and I don't think there'll ever be another king of the like like just the weight. Like he's just amazing to watch, right? Like. He just does things, and all of a sudden he can hit shots again. It's just like what ha- what what happened? What button you flip? And then he does this, and he crowns himself the king. He's the king. It kind of sucks because it's a playing thing. Where it's like, I oh know. yeah, crowning yourself going into the playing man. I'm hey, like, but listen, they were injuries, count- though. You know? But they were and they were counted out, bro. Like the Lakers have been counted out all season. Wait a minute, is this true? And I know this is the vitamin C show, but we're gonna talk about some NBA stuff. Did they it's fire? The playoffs, right? Did they yeah. fire their coach? Did Darvin Ham get fired? No. Okay, what? so I, there was a there's a rumor going around out there. They were talking about potentially, I think, like parting ways, but they're not gonna do it now. They better I think if, not. I think I think if they lose in the playing tournament and they miss the playoffs, they probably will consider it. Maybe it's something they visit in the off season. I don't think that's fair to Darvin Ham, considering how this roster is constructed. But yeah, there were whispers about that. Poor us, Paul Silas. In, I know. Uh, 
Si- no. Silas got it rough, man. That that was a that's a that's a bum rap in Houston. I don't like that at all. The way no. that was handled, and Lord knows Dallas. The whole situation in Dallas is a mess too. So is Kyrie done? Or, oh, excuse me, not he. Done. Are they done <laughs> with Kyrie? I don't know because I don't know where else is going to pay him, and I don't think that he's necessarily the problem there. I think I think they've got issues with Luca to figure out. That whole situation is a dumpster Ooh. fire, and you've got a really vocal. Uh, intrusive owner in yeah. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. And like, granted, like he's done a really good job at building that team up and, you know, building out and winning that championship with Dirk. They should have done more with his time there because he's a historically great player, yeah. in my opinion. I agree. And I think that there was a lot of wasted opportunities there. And I think that right now for Luca, they're about one year away from, you know, asking for a trade out and someone said as much i think it was tim mcmahon was suggesting that he heard rumors and whispers of that kind of stuff that if things don't change there in a year um they're looking at you know he would be looking at moving on and you've got the same stuff going on with the hawks too the hawks apparently up yeah maybe looking to move on from trey Trey young Young. and then you and you add one more wrinkle into that and you even have adrian wisnarowski talking about this and i mentioned it before we were talking about the 76ers 76 not Joel they, Embiid if well I don't know if it's going to be Joel Embiid but there's going to be massive changes to that organization if so they don't reach the coach the, starts it, with the coach well, well I, I don't think regardless of how Doc the season gone. goes I think Doc's gone Damn. um I like tough, Doc but, man but like it is Doc what it too, is but you know it is what it is you know? it's one of those things where I think Doc's kind of in this rough spot where he's with that roster they should be performing better they should have made it further. He fails to make adjustments. And eventually a coach just loses the room. People get tired of hearing the same voice. So, uh, yeah, Philly's bound to get changes if they don't make the Eastern Conference Finals. And to be honest, I'm not convinced regardless of who they end up going against. Um, I just don't see them making it past the second round. Um, so that's just me. Um, but anywho, um, I also wanted to talk about it before we go into the top five because – You've got a little something on that to talk about. Um, okay. I wanted to talk about Celtic stats um, as they wrapped up the season. This is from Dan Greenberg, uh, Stooley Greeny. Um, the final stat lines for the Celtics in terms of ranking amongst the leagues, they are second in wins behind the Bucks, number two in offense, number two in defense, number one net rating, number one point differential, um, number two for clutch time winning percentage, uh, fifth in assists, fifth in true shooting percentage, second in road wins, um, first for wins against teams over 500 or more um, in terms of record, fourth in half-court offense, fourth in half-court defense, second in three-pointers made, sixth in three-point shooting percentage, and fifth in opponents uh, opponent points, which I'm assuming is opponent points allowed. And so that's where the Celtics end up falling. I think that is pretty fair. And the first team, I think, since like the Warriors to have a uh, like a top offense and defense, like a top 10 in each category um, going into the postseason. I think I remember seeing something like that. Don't quote me on it now. Now I'm going to have to go pull it up. Damn it. Yeah, you go. You go pull <laughs> it up. I just have questions because it's like, yeah, I mean, these are really interesting uh, stats in a good way. Right. The Celtics were dominant all season long. I mean. If you watched my hand exercise, pause, I was able to get through all the stats almost on one hand, minus one. And that was the three-point percentage, which was higher. But all of a sudden, we were taking like 57,000 threes a game, and it was just messing up the percentage, especially when you're not hitting them. And so, look, this is really good for the Celtics. You know, here's my question, though, Tim, why are you looking up those stats? And this is what confuses me just a tad bit. And I just feel like when it comes to the Boston Celtics, like why do they still get overshadowed, overlooked, and why are they not like the favorites? Like why are the Bucks the favorites all the time? Is it because of the Giannis, the superstardom in a Giannis? Uh, or I, I just don't get it. It's just like, dude, they're overall, they're probably the best team in the NBA right now. And they play really good basketball. And and I don't know if this is a stat, but I'm curious to know what their percentage of wins are when they're playing against other dominant teams. They rarely lose to the dominant ones. They lose to the ones that come out scrapping and grappling and they ain't playing for anything. And so, like, that to me just makes me feel kind of some type of way. You know, I'm not trying to be emotional about it, but that's no, who I, I am. No, I get that. You no, know I what I mean? No, I get that. 
No, yeah. and I mean, well, so like I said, they're they're first in wins against teams that have a 500 or better record. So they have the best record against teams that are there. It is have are winning teams. Um, in terms of that stat, I was talking about the only teams ever to be top two in offense and defense in a single season. It's the Warriors uh, from the KD Warriors from 2016, 17, the Warriors from 2014, 15, and then this year's Celtics. So very elite company. Now, in terms of why people probably look a little bit more fondly upon the Bucks, one, I think Giannis has been great. Um, yes. Giannis has done a lot for that team, and they've kind of dealt with a lot of injuries and stuff. Finished with one win better than the Celtics, and they finished the season to a certain extent a little bit stronger. Uh, they still dropped a couple games, and obviously I tend to agree with you where I think the Celtics now at this point, because of how people hyped up the Bucks, the, the Celtics are being a little bit overlooked in that conversation. But I think the big thing for the Bucks is they ripped off that massive win streak, and I think that kind of changed the, the entire right perception. Too. Exactly. Yeah, they got hot at the right time, and everyone mm-hmm. kind of said, well, they're healthy now, like Middleton's back, and now all of a sudden, like it's Respect. the wrecking crews all together again. So, like, I get that, you know, I, I get the notion. So, but that being said, I, I think, you know, there are moves to be made in terms of this postseason and how that's going to change things. Mm. That's for another show, though, because we, we, we're we going to go through this Celtics uh, team. But right now, we're going to uh, own in on the playoffs. The playoffs was on this way. They'll be playing Saturday. Very excited to see what the Celtics are going to do. Tim, are you planning to go to any of the games uh, at home this year? And I see that he's uh, currently <clears throat> on the phone. Do you plan to attend to go to any of the games this year? Did I plan to attend? Do you plan to attend any of the playoff games this year? I, I'm hoping so for work. I, I'm guessing that I get a chance to. Um in terms of being able to go in person, but we'll see. Um, I definitely plan on trying to get to the finals if I can, Yeah. Um, but we'll see how that goes. I was trying to get out there this Saturday. I, I was hoping they would have played on Friday. Unfortunately, they're playing on a Saturday, and I won't be able to make it out there this particular Saturday, but I'm definitely planning to get to one of the games uh, this weekend coming up. I'm hoping to get back, and going to the finals again would be cool. I went to only one game last year. And it happened to be game four of the NBA finals. So it's a little rough. Um, but my friends and I, we went together and we had decided basically like, we're going to try and go to a playoff game. And then we got to a certain point where we said, you know what? We're not going to go to a play. We won't go to a game until they make the NBA finals. And then they made the finals. And as soon as they did, we were like, all right, we got to look at tickets. And I dropped an exorbitant amount of money on tickets, <laughs> but it was it was worth it. I wish yeah. that they had won, but it was an incredible experience. And now, so if I end up going back, I think at least for some of these playoff games, if I'm going in, that's going to probably be for work. So I'd probably be going in as media just because it'd be easier to, you know, trying to buy tickets and do all that stuff. And then I'd have to take off work for it. And so I'd much rather try and figure out the work logistics and just be, you know, on site working these games. But Playoff atmosphere is fun, and playoffs are always cool. It's really, really fun to be able to say the Celtics are back in it again, and they're still in that legitimate mix. Um, you know, we talked about the Bucks being in, you know, the driver's seat in terms with that first seed, but overall, I still feel like this is a really, really good time for the Celtics to kind of flip that switch. Now, you talked about this before we hopped on, and I know you put out a tweet, and it seemed to get a little bit of traction talking about Jason Tatum, who... Uh, just became the first Celtics in franchise history uh, to go ahead and score 30 points or more, averaging 30 points a game and passing Larry Bird in the process. And is the most since Isaiah Thomas did during that, uh, where Isaiah finished like top five MVP voting that year, um, that legendary run. So you took a little bit of heat for this from some people. And you said that Jason Tatum um, will probably – you didn't say probably. You said, I said will. will be. Yeah, will, will be. be. He will be. he will be the greatest Celtic of all time. Yeah. Now, first things first. I tend to agree with you. Okay. The rings conversation is going to always come up, and it and should. It absolutely it should. should. It should. It yeah. should. It's so early on in his career too. So like, I don't want to ever put that pressure on him. But like at the same time, like he's this early on in his career and he's this accomplished. So it's just like he's already doing all of the things that you would expect a franchise player to do and he's 
he's leading this generation. And it's not, you know, this isn't a dig at Jalen Brown or anything like that. No. Jalen Brown is fantastic in his own right. He's going to go down as one of the greatest players in this franchise's history. And Hands we're going to get in that too when we talk about the top five that we said. Um, but I think Jason Tatum deserves his flowers. And I think that's, it's a fair expectation. And I think that's probably what he wants. You know, I think he wants to be the greatest player in this franchise's existence. Yeah. And, you, and it's 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 a very tough task, right? Or tall task, however you want to say it, because Larry Bird, okay? Like, who? how do you outdo Larry Bird? How do you outwin Bill Russell? When you talk about chips, no one in the history of basketball no one's is going to have that. more chips. No one's touching right? that. And that's almost impossible. So I get it. But does that equate to how great of a basketball player you are, like, single-handedly? I just feel like what Jason Tatum is doing now – at a young age, he's breaking these guys' records. He's breaking Larry Bird's records. He just set a whole new record for the first player ever in franchise history. No disrespect to Mr. Bird or, or McHale or any of these guys, but none of them did that. And, and they were great. And so at that time, it's cool. But listen, let me explain something to everybody. Records are meant to be broken, okay? They just are. The rules change, the time, the way basketball is different, like the players are different, you know, they're not getting beat up like they used to back in the day. So, I mean, yeah, his the longevity for him to play on in this sport is probably going to be greater than any of those guys that we mentioned. Now, I will say Bill Russell played for a long time, but Larry Bird had the back injury, so he couldn't play as long. Greatest, probably, I would say, one of the greatest two-way defenders, three-way players, whatever you wanted to call Larry Bird, he was it. He was the guy. Like, you know what I mean? Could shoot, could beat you with the opposite hand, could defend you, could pass, could dunk, could hit threes, could just do it all. He was the man. But I feel like when you look at Jason Tatum and you're looking what it, what he's doing, Absolutely, like right now, and you're saying to myself, man, this kid is on a trajectory. And that's what I meant by the will be. It's like, dude, if he keeps continuing to play this type of basketball, keeps making these all NBA teams, keeps doing the things that he's doing, how how can he not? The only thing that would tarnish him is if he's not winning championships. And I guarantee you that changes now. Like that changes now. And once he has that championship mind, the league better watch out. I'm telling you, they better watch out. I feel like Tatum has more of a killer instinct, and I'm going to say this, than LeBron James. And yeah, I mean it. And I, you know I like LeBron. I talked about him before we started our show. But the killer instinct, that's something that you can't teach. You either have it or you don't. That's something Kobe had. That's something Michael Jordan had. That's something to me that LeBron lacks. LeBron's still a great player, but Tatum has that gene. And I'm going to tell you right now, once he gets a taste of the, of the actual championship, they win one. Woo! Watch out. And I think that's kind of where the narrative around him changes, too. You know, I think if the Celtics had won that championship against the Warriors, the way that the Celtics are perceived and the way that Jason Tatum is perceived now, the Rings conversation is both great and understandable and also, like, the worst thing that's ever happened to any kind of, like, basketball, you know, any kind of conversation involving basketball, historical greats, you know, you, you hold it against guys and you also use it as kind of like, you know, a, a, a marks marking stick, almost kind of like, so like players who have more championships might not be better players, but because they have titles, it gets held against guys who don't. Some of the greatest players in the sport didn't have championships. Carmelo Anthony, one of the greatest offensive players in NBA history, doesn't have a title. Tracy McGrady, like there's so many amazing players you can name that don't have rings. And for Jason Tatum and like Jalen Brown, these guys are young enough that they've got a lot of good basketball ahead of them. And they have these opportunities. And based on the way that the team is performing and the, the way that the organization is, you look at situations like Dallas in Minnesota and stuff that's going on in like Portland or even Chicago too. Like these teams they need to be like run top to bottom well in order to put the players in the best position to win. And I think the Celtics have done that with these guys. And I think that's, what's going to ultimately like help his legacy, like staying in Boston, playing here the rest of your career, winning championships and you're creating an environment in a culture. That's why all of these guys from the past, when you talk about the greats in Celtics history, including Bill Russell, like, 
that doesn't happen overnight. And like that happens because of consistency and effort and just going ahead and building a team around the right guys. Bill Russell is one of the greatest Celtics of all time. And when we talk about our top five, my conversation in terms of my top five in no particular order. Okay. It's going to be Larry Bird. It's going to be Kevin McHale. Um, it's going to be Bill Russell. I think at this point in time, like I have to put Tatum in there and then I got to put Paul Pierce. Those, those are mine. And I, I think we're along the same lines of thinking. Cause like, you know, you showed me your top five and I think that's what my top five is too. The only one that you can argue that you could put in that conversation is a little bit controversial. And I think it's a little early for it, but talking about Jalen Brown being in the top five, I think that's crazy. Cause it's like, you know, you got John Havlicek, you got Hondo, you know? Yeah. So it's just like one of those things where, you know, there's yeah. always going to be people who disagree with that. But what are your thoughts? When you look at Jalen Brown and his impact on the Boston Celtics, I mean, it was there his rookie season. Like you knew getting him from Cal, he was going to come in here and he was going to light this league on fire. Right. He was dunking over everybody. He was able to get to the rim. He was able to score. I didn't realize he was going to be this type of an elite score. I did not. I, I promise you I didn't because I just I just I just didn't think it would last he continued to develop year after year. Now, when I got to put him up against guys like Kevin McHale and and those type of guys, I mean, people might even have Robert Parrish as one of their top five. Yeah, Celtics I, sl- I slept on time. the Chief there for sure. Right. And so, yeah. like, it, it's, it's definitely subjective to, you know, what era of basketball you watched. But Jalen Brown is trending up. And I love everything that we have now and the way the team is constructed and what Jason Tatum is doing Without Jalen Brown, he's like a key piece in the cog. Like if he without him, it's gonna be it's that much tough, more tougher, you know, for Jalen Brown. It's that much, you know. And so, like, I mean, for Jason Tatum. And so, I don't know. It's, it's I know it's premature, but I mean, he was here one year earlier than Jason Tatum. So why can't if we can have Tatum and add him to the conversation? Why can't Jalen Brown be added to the conversation? No disrespect to Kevin McHale. No disrespect to uh um. Havlicek, no disrespect to Robert Parrish and some of these greats, and I'd be damned if somebody put Danny Ainge in there, but just no disrespect <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. But um, Brown is definitely something to watch, and you got to have Paul Pierce. And notice, guys, I my one of my favorite players of all time, just favorite players, like, you know, was, was uh, Kevin Garnett, and I know I don't have him in my top five, and I feel like he should be in there, right? He was a Celtic for a period of time, and if if, if this was my top five, I'll put, I'll put him over Kevin McHale, like, you know what I mean? So that's just me. So here's my top five. Larry Bird, Bill Russell, Paul Pierce, Tatum, Kevin Garnett, in the discussion. And I think that's a fair one. I think the only, like, critique that people have when it comes to talking about KG in that regard was that he just wasn't here long enough. He wasn't here long enough. But he won a championship here and he played some great ball here. You know, he immediately came in, was a culture changer and led to that championship. He, I think when people look at that team that look at that 08 squad, they know that he was the best player. Like he was the best player on that team. But Paul Pierce was like the most important, right? So like Paul Pierce goes out and wins finals MVP. But in that same season, you know, you have, Kevin Garnett, I think, won DPOY that year. Yep, defensive um, player of the year. Came in and, like, just immediately dominated, changed that culture. You had Ubuntu take over, and it led to, you know, that big three era in Boston. It would have lasted longer if these guys got together at a younger age, and that's kind of why I think people look at that situation differently. And, I mean, hell, you break into the conversation about talking about Ray Allen being a Celtics great yeah. People obviously got some strong opinions when it comes to Ray Allen or even guys like, you know, Rajon Rondo. How we're, and then you start talking about point guards. You're talking about Bob Cusey. Bob, like Cus- Bob, Cusey, Bob Cusey was left off our list. And it's like, I, it's I, difficult. You're talking about historic franchises that have Dennis X Edwards. amount of players. Yeah, they're guys, you know? you know? I mean, it's there's so many of them. So when it comes to that kind of conversation, it can get really, really convoluted by these different eras. So many so many people love to watch their era and that's what they're attached to, you know, high ranking players. And that's sort of what that recency bias is. But I tend to agree with you where I think Jalen is going to finish a lot higher than people expect. And it's sort of like 
the way that you would probably look at like the Bulls greats, like who are the greatest Chicago Bulls players? You're probably obviously going to have MJ in Pippen. there. Yeah, like Pippen's going to be two. in that conversation right. too. Exactly. <laughs> so like you know, like there are certain players because because of their careers and their fates, their destinies, as Jalen Brown would have said, are tied together. That's what's going to ultimately be linking them long after their playing days are through. Um, but yeah. And, and, end of rant on that subject. All from me. right. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, uh, is there anything else you got for us today, Wayne? No, man. Just looking forward to the playoffs. Uh, looking forward to that first series. Bring on the Hawks. Bring on the Heat. Either way, the Celtics bringing the pain, baby. Yeah, someone's catching hands in the first round. Hands. <laughs> All righty. So that's our episode for today. Um, this has been the Vitamin C's podcast, proud part of the CLNS Media Network. And we will catch you next time. And hopefully be round one at that point. So deuces. Cheers. Sign up at fanduel.com slash Boston and get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. 